Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Sport Federation TV, the show that brings you all the news about all the sports federations in all of the Western Cape. Tonight we've got a great lineup with four different and varied and exciting sports joining us. We've got badminton, chess, cycling and even fencing. Later on in the show, you're going to have another opportunity to win an assorted case of Bash's drinks. So please keep your cell phones ready for that announcement. Joining me first, all the way from the Cape Winelands, is badminton. And two athletes and administrators are here to tell us more about their sports. Welcome to Emmy Wiggins and Didier Spassan. Welcome to Sports Federation TV. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so please, to start off with, tell us what is your roles in your federation? My role in the federation is I'm the uh, chairman for the technical officials in Cape Winelands, Boerland. And as well, I'm a player, still a player, um, at the for Grandmasters now and also I'm very involved in S badminton South Africa as a umpire and, as, and a referee in South Africa, Africa and international. Wow that's quite a quite an impressive resume and you Didius? I'm still playing uh, I'm the uh, the secretary for organizing the matches, in other words, the match secretary, uh, trying to organize all the dates, which is a hassle to get uh, no classes between the different, because we've got uh, three different uh, leagues that are being played. And to prevent all the dates to clash, it's not always so easy. So you're the master time manager? Uh, <laughs> I like to work with uh, spreadsheets and databases, so uh, that works out. Okay, great. And you've got a man to do it in your organization. Absolutely. <laughs> in most other federations, it's the women that have to take that responsibility. Yeah. So, uh, you mentioned three different divisions or yes. leagues. Yes. Uh, but badminton also caters for a variety of age groups. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about the different categories people can compete in. So we start off with the under 9, under 11, under 13 tournament. And then there's the under 15 division, under 17 division, under 19 division. That is all for our juniors. And then um, we've got our seniors, that is the top players in South Africa. And we are very fortunate to have the most top player um, male guy in South Africa that's playing for Cape Winelands. And... Um, then we have the other age groups of the veterans, masters, grandmasters, uh, silver eagles, golden eagles, and the new one that we're very, very excited for is the diamond eagles. Diamond eagles. <laughs> so the diamond eagles is which age category? Seventy plus. So they're going to have their own championships yes. and on a SA level, trophies, the works. Do you have a lot of people registered for the sport in that category? No. Unfortunately not, because and it, it's not because of, of the age that the people is not here with us anymore, but it's because also of, of you know, all these years and, and injuries involved and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, we, because there are so many people available in that age group, right. we did organize them their own tournament. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, Cape Winelands is known for being involved in sports across the spectrum. Um, and obviously, badminton has a very strong following there too. Tell us about the history of badminton in, in Cape Winelands. Uh, Cape Winelands started off as Boland Badminton. When? 1948. Wow. Uh, in 1955, the constitution was amended to make uh, provision for all color groups. So we are already transformed since 1955. Mm, and the situation wasn't favorable for it back then? No, not, no. not always. Yeah. Then in 1915, um, or when, when did we change to, uh, ch we changed from Boerland to Cape Winelands. Mm -hmm to be in line with uh, the Sports Federation's uh, names and borders. Uh, now, for Cape Winelands at the moment, we've got teams from Robertson, Wooster, uh, Stellenbosch, uh, Brackenfell, Kruifontein, 
Paul and even as far as Feldruf, uh with, with Worcester in between. Mm -hmm. So as I've said earlier, to get dates and class for all these tournaments and competitions is not easy. Mm -hmm. We've got a major uh, league right in the beginning of the of the season, which we call the franchise, in which we've got nine teams. Uh, but for those teams, we se the selectors select players and then compile teams of equal strength. So you have strength against strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is finished before the first school holidays. After that, we've got a, a men's league uh, in which we, they purely play uh, singles and doubles. But we've e even got ladies that participate in the men's league. And uh, they don't, or there are some of the ladies who can show the men how to play. Is that an open division then? Yes. Okay. Uh, then after that, we've got a three different uh, league, uh, the mixed league, first league, second league and third league. Uh, first league, uh, Stalmos Martis are by far the superior there. Then for the second league, uh, Monument Park is the leader at the moment, Monument Park which is situated in the Kruifontein area. And then Brackenfell is the champion in the third league. Emmy, mm. um, yes. is uh, badminton um, well supported at the schools? Um, you know what, um, the problem is like um, most of the schools is uninformed about what mm. badminton really is. Like for instance you do have schools that badminton is a school sport mm -hmm. but uh, because of the, 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 the teachers there does not really know what badminton is so it's not supported there mm. so we've got like um, this um, number one guy f in south africa uh, he and um, another player from stellenbosch they are involved with the schools for training and um, we've got like three s junior schools in in stellenbosch and uh, one school in bukweni in paul and we've got um, them involved with three clubs in, in Cape Winans as well, that they do the training um, for the younger players, for the upcoming players as mm -hmm. well. So there is in place a system called a shuttle uh, time that we must go out to the schools to do some um, training of what is badminton and how to start badminton. So where does your mandate come from? <sighs> Th that is basically because um, from it comes from from generations. It comes from word to mouth. Mm -hmm. um, go to um, you, you hear people talk about it and, and go and try out the sport, or your parents was playing. So now you go there and now you play as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's um, and I, and I think the the main thing about this is because. Um, Okay, nowadays it's different, but earlier days it was very uh, difficult to, to catch badminton on, on TV mm -hmm. because it's such a fast sport. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was difficult for them to catch where the shuttle is. So, but uh, now with, with all the technology and stuff, it is so incredible to watch badminton on, on TV. Yeah. I mean, like um, on YouTube, it is, it is so wonderful to watch all those overseas matches. Um, so now exposure is there. But for our players, especially um, our top players in South Africa, um, there's, there's not really uh, funding for them to, to go to all the tournaments to get the points to qualify for, for Olympics. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if someone would hear our prayer <laughs> and, and start funding um, yeah. our top players, and even if they want to get involved in, in Cape Winans itself. Speaking about um, top players, what were some of your highlights for the 2017 uh, season thus far? Mm. Well, my highlight was um, I was involved with the uh, All Africa tournament that was held in Benoni this year in March. And um, it is always a highlight to be involved as an umpire and then to be involved during the finals. And also I was nominated uh, by um, 
uh, Western Cape Sports Council uh, for Technical Official of the Year, and I received the nomination. Um, so it, that was really a very highlight for me. And the other thing is that I'm still able to play. It's just so wonderful. Yeah, and, and you, you definitely cater for that in your sport. Yes, absolutely, yeah. 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 But I, I, um, I don't only play my age group. I play all the age groups I can play. Oh, she, she, she played uh, the vets this year, which is about 40. Uh, so uh, they do cater. And what's also amazing is with the, we've mentioned the golden eagles and the silver eagles, but in the Silver Eagles, which is for players above uh, 60, you do get quite a number of players that are actually above 65 and 70 that still fit enough to play in the above 60. Right. That's why uh, they are starting the above 70 uh, to get players into into that group as well. Mm. Okay, to wrap up, what is the upcoming uh, special events that people can, people can look out for? Okay, the, the first upcoming is the um, SA Ground Masters that's in Durban. Mm -hmm. And then the highlight is um, the SA Senior Tournament that is in Benoni. And then the other highlight that's in Pretoria in December is the SA International Tournament. Okay. And there's lots yes. of SA players involved and also a lot of international players because they have to play in an international tournament to get points to qualify for Olympics. Yeah. And it's usually like um, this, I think it's now uh, the first year now th after the previous um, uh, Olympics. So now they start again for collecting points. So we are sure that like this year it will be Lots of international players there, there is international. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And you, you probably have a Facebook presence? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, yeah. and people may get information there on how to yes. register yes. for yes. leagues. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Emmy and Didius, for joining us and telling us about your amazing it was a sport. It was a pleasure. And please return. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that's it from Cape Winelands and Badminton. But coming up after the break, Western Cape Cycling is joining us, so don't go anywhere.